join me as we continue our Family Catechism series with a special novena of reflections on the precious blood of Jesus Christ, shown most vividly in the Holy Eucharist. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. This is St. John chapter 6, verses 52 and 55. The great spiritual director of souls, St. Francis of Sales, was told to have said to those who were forbidden by the confessors to receive Holy Communion frequently because they were terrible sinners, the following counsel. There are two kinds of people who should go to Holy Communion often, the perfect, so that they persevere in perfection, and the imperfect, so they can attain perfection, the strong not to become weak, and the weak to become strong, the sick to be cured, and the healthy to prevent sickness. For the most of us who are imperfect, weak, and sickly, we need to go to Mass frequently and receive Holy Communion. Tell those who question you why you prefer to go to Mass daily and receive Holy Communion frequently, that you want to become more patient, so you must receive your patient Savior. Because you want to become obedient, so you must receive your obedient Savior. Because you want to love the cross, so you must receive your suffering Savior. You want to receive the Lord because you want to become strong against the temptations of the devil, the flesh, and the world. Tell those who question you that Jesus said, He who eats my flesh shall live by me. I wish to live, and therefore I receive Jesus my life, that he may live in me and I in him. And at the hour of your death, when the priest comes to give you Holy Biaticum, you will be able to say with St. Teresa of Avila, My Lord and my Bridegroom, so then the hour has come at last, for which my heart has longed so much. Now is the time that we shall see its other face to face. Blessed be this hour. One may ask, what are the fruits of Holy Communion? The Compendium of the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that communion increases our union with Christ and with His Church. It preserves and renews the life of grace received at baptism and confirmation and makes us grow in love for our neighbor. It strengthens us in charity, wipes away venial sins, and preserves us from mortal sin in the future. After receiving Holy Communion, it is certain that our main duty should be to ask our Lord for special graces. St. Teresa of Avila once said, The time after Communion is the best time for negotiating with Jesus Christ, for then He is seated on the throne of grace and saying, What do you desire of me? When a prince goes for a short visit to his subject in a distant province, his whole time is spent in hearing their complaints and fulfilling their requests. In the same way, Jesus Christ, our heavenly King, comes in the Blessed Sacrament on a short visit 
to us for our petitions and fulfill our requests. Quoting Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 to 47, St. Alphonsus Liguori once said, What man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to them that asked Him? Do you want to overcome your passions and sinful inclinations? Ask Jesus, when you visit Him in the Blessed Sacrament, to destroy what is sinful in you and to make you into what you want to become. As he did with King David, Mary Magdalene, Paul, Margaret of Cortona, and many other sinners who become well-known saints. Ask the Lord to change your ambitious heart into a humble one, your timid heart into a brave and courageous one, and your sinful heart into a holy heart. Saint Catherine of Siena once said that the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist never grows old. It is as effective now as it was at the time of the apostles. The Lord is willing to grant you everything needed for true holiness. If you persevere in asking for those graces, it is guaranteed you'll become a saint, a great saint, one day. Many people refuse to go to Holy Mass and receive Holy Communion frequently because of so many excuses. Their alibis range from their being recalcitrant to being overconfident, as to think they can receive Holy Communion so often. Let me tell you, it is not being overconfident to receive Holy Communion daily, even with our imperfections and defects. It is not proud and arrogant to go to Communion often, even though we still commit mistakes, granted that they are not altogether willful and deliberate. The Church teaches that the Holy Eucharist is food and medicine at the same time. It is food for the healthy and medicine for the sick. A holy Dominican nun once said, For me, even if I know I am unworthy, I still desire to receive communion daily. For by more frequent communion, I hope to become more worthy. When the Pharisees were shocked at seeing Jesus eat with sinners, he answered them, They who are healthy do not need a physician, but only those who are sick. You say, I am not worthy, thinking it comes from being humble? However, you must know that generally, it shows greater humility to receive Holy Communion frequently than to rarely receive it. One day, when St. Francis of Rome was going to receive Communion, the devil said to her, How can you, who are so full of venial sins, dare to receive the Immaculate Lamb? She instantly realized that the enemy wanted to deprive her of the great joy of receiving Holy Communion and silence him by spitting in his face. After this, the Blessed Virgin appeared to her and praised her for her actions against the devil. Our Blessed Mother said that our imperfections, instead of being an obstacle, should be a motivation to receive communion, since in communion we find the remedy for all our miseries. Others may say, I do not see the need to go to Holy Communion often. There are many people who receive Holy Communion once a year and yet are good Christians as those who receive Holy Communion often. I will not argue their points, but rarely will anyone agree that people who only receive Holy Communion once or twice a year are, in general, as virtuous as those who receive Holy Communion often. Show to me the people whom you think are most righteous, those who live the Word without giving into worldliness, who are calm and accepting of God's will when difficulties arise, who are willing to do everything for the suffering neighbors in charity, regularly attending Mass, careful in asking for spiritual advice, faithful in their responsibilities, and uplifting in their conversations. Show me 
those people. And I will show you that these same people receive Holy Communion at Holy Mass every week and often even daily. This is so because we know that no one can live the life of holiness without the grace of God. The sacrament of Holy Eucharist was instituted to give grace in the fullness. In John 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. Pelagius recounted a story of a young man who tried to seduce a virtuous married woman, but failed in all his attempts. In revenge, he turned to the devil to curse the woman. The devil caused the woman to appear as a wild beast. Her husband, greatly disturbed, took her to St. Macarin's to be delivered from the devil's curse to the saint's prayers and blessings. Finally, the woman was released from the diabolical curse and returned to her normal appearance. St. Macarin's gave her this advice. In the future, go more often to Holy Mass and receive Holy Communion than you had been in the past. God revealed to me that the reason this happened was because you failed to receive Holy Communion for five straight weeks. One may stop receiving Holy Communion for five months or even an entire year and still find no need for receiving more often. Do you think the devil would have been inactive as to have stayed away from destroying your soul? Our Lord often punishes severely those who convince others not to receive Holy Communion. A woman mocked St. Catherine of Siena for going often to Holy Communion. On her return home, the woman fell to the ground and died instantly without being able to receive the last sacraments. St. Lugardis would often receive Holy Communion until one day her superior disapproved and would not allow her to do so in the future. The saint obeyed, but at the moment her superior became ill and suffered severe pains. Realizing that her sickness was a punishment for preventing St. Lugardos from receiving Holy Communion, she allowed her once again, and she became better. There are many fruits or effects in receiving the body of Christ daily in Holy Communion during the Mass. First, it confers an increase in sanctifying grace. The life of the soul remains in being in the state of friendship with God. And what makes it acceptable to God is sanctifying grace. The scripture says in Revelation 22 verse 11, Let him that is just be justified still, and let him that is holy be sanctified still. God gives Holy Communion to convey special graces an increase of sanctifying grace. When a rich man owns a field that he wants to change into a garden, he is not satisfied with simply putting up a fence around it. He continues to carefully cultivate it, fill it with the most beautiful plants, and decorate it with new good quality ornaments. In the same way, the Almighty God in His love and goodness has numerous ways by which the soul may improve with the graces and become more beautiful in his eyes. One may ask, what is the value of sanctifying grace? St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that the lowest degree of sanctifying grace is worth more than all the riches of the world. Think of all the riches of this world. A humble Catholic Christian who receives Holy Communion outweighs all those riches. After her death, St. Teresa of Avila appeared to one of her religious sisters. She told her that all the saints in heaven, without exception, would be willing to come back to this world and to remain here until the end of time, suffering all the miseries human undergo. Only to gain one more degree of sanctifying grace and the eternal glory equal to it. When St. Catherine of Siena was asked by her confessor to describe to him the beauty of a soul in the state of grace shown to her, she replied, 
the beauty and glow of a soul in the state of grace is so great that if you were to see it, you would fall into ecstasy and be willing to endure all sufferings for its sake. Angels love to keep company with those saints on earth who every day with great devotion receive Holy Communion. Second, with frequent reception of Holy Communion, we are preserved from committing mortal sin. The Council of Trent teaches us that the sacrament of the Eucharist is the cure by which we are freed from daily faults and preserved from mortal sins. St. Francis of Sales compared Holy Communion to the tree of life that grew in the Garden of Paradise. He said that if our first parents had eaten the said tree, they would have avoided the death of the body. So by feeding on the Eucharist, the sacrament of life, we avoid the death of the soul. Remember this, Holy Communion preserves us from mortal sin in two ways. First, it weakens our passions. Second, it protects us against the assaults of the devil. In regards to weakening our passions, everyone has some sin or passion that is enkindled in his heart more easily and more often than any other. This passion causes the majority of his faults. It might be anger, envy, pride, sensuality, and impurity. By frequently receiving Holy Communion, the soul becomes holy and strong. St. Bernard says, if we do not experience often violent attacks of anger, envy, or evil desires like before, let us thank the Holy Eucharist who produced these effects in us. Another effect of Holy Communion is that it protects us against the assaults of the devil. The danger of mortal sin is due to the strength of our passions and the temptations of the devil. Receiving Holy Communion often protects us. When Ramiros, king of Spain, had been fighting a long time against the Saracens, he retreated with his soldiers to a mountain to ask the assistance of the Almighty God. While praying, St. James the Apostle appeared to him and commanded him to make all his soldiers to go to confession and receive Holy Communion the next day. These done, St. James led Ramiros and his men to fight against the Saracens and gain a complete and brilliant victory. St. Thomas Aquinas said, Hell was conquered by the death of our Savior. The Blessed Sacrament is the renewal of the death of Jesus Christ, and no sooner we receive the body of Christ in us, the soonest the devil flees from us, allowing the angels to assist us. St. John Chrysostom also said, As the angel of destruction passed by, all the houses that had been sprinkled with the blood of the Lamb, so the devil passes us by who received the Lamb of God. St. Ambrose added, When Satan sees the presence of God in our soul, he flies away, leaving no room for his temptation. The third effect of Holy Communion is that it truly unites us to God. It was St. Alphonsus who said that as the food we eat is changed into our blood, so in Holy Communion, God becomes one and united with us. St. Augustine said it even more succinctly. He said that while earthly food is changed into us, with Holy Communion, we are changed into Christ. To this, St. Cyril of Alexandria visually explained, Yes, he who receives Holy Communion unites himself to Jesus Christ as two pieces of wax melted into one. St. Cyprian remarked that Holy Communion detaches the heart from all worldly pleasures and unites us to God completely. St. Francis, St. Monica, St. Agnes, and many others were captivated with celestial sweetness in Holy Communion and exalted. Our heart and our flesh have rejoiced in the living God. For what have we in heaven? And besides you, what do we desire upon earth? The fourth effect of Holy Communion is it increases faith 
hope and charity. With the virtue of faith, one may exclaim, My Jesus, my love, my God, my all. Men would have a stronger faith in the mystery of the Holy Eucharist if we receive Holy Communion more often and devoutly. One single Holy Communion is better than all the arguments of the schools teaching our Catholic faith. When we do not receive Holy Communion, we lose faith. We think less of heaven, of hell, of evil, of sin, of the goodness of our Lord and the duty of loving Him. Let us eat and our eyes shall be open for us the psalm reads, taste and see the sweetness of the Lord. Hope too receives a great increase from this sacrament. For it is the sign of our inheritance. It has the promise of eternal salvation attached to it. He who eats of this bread shall live forever. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. It is true that in this life we can never have a guarantee of our salvation. But Holy Communion most powerfully confirms and strengthens our hope of obtaining heaven and the graces necessary for living and dying in holiness. Our Savior Himself enters the heart and seems to say, Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. Can I refuse the less who had given the greater? Can I withhold any necessary graces who have given myself? Lastly, Charity is the virtue that is more specially nourished by the Holy Eucharist. This may be called by importance the proper effect of the sacrament, as indeed it is of the Incarnation itself. I have come to cast fire upon earth, and how I wish it were blazing already. Suffering is the true test of love. St. Paul says, that the Christian glories in difficult challenges because the charity of God is poured out into his heart. By infusing love into our heart this way, the Holy Eucharist gives us strength to suffer for Christ. In the life of St. Ludwina, who was sick for 38 continuous years, we read that in the beginning of her sickness, she shrunk from suffering. By divine providence, however, a celebrated servant of God, Father John Poor, went to see her. Seeing that she was not quite resigned to the will of God, she urged her to meditate frequently on the sufferings of Jesus Christ. He told her that by the remembrance of his passion, she would gain courage to suffer more willingly. She promised to do so and fulfill her promise but she could not find peace of soul. Every meditation was disgusting and unpleasant, and she began again to break out into her usual complaints. After a spiritual director asked if she succeeded in meditating upon our Lord's passion, she replied, Father, your counsel was very good, but my suffering does not allow me to find comfort in my Savior's sorrows. He urged her to continue. But seeing at last that she gained no fruit from it, his zeal suggested another means. He gave her Holy Communion, and afterwards whispered in her ear, Until now I have urged you to remember constantly Christ's sufferings as a remedy for your pains. But now let Jesus Christ himself urge you. Indeed, no sooner had she swallowed the sacred host then she felt such a great love for Jesus and such an urgent desire to suffer that she broke out into tears for two weeks. From that moment, the sufferings of Jesus were deeply impressed in her mind, thinking of them all the time. This was how she was able to patiently suffer for Him. Her disease at last grew so violent that her flesh became decayed and were filled with worms. The decay grew even internally, so that she had to suffer the most excruciating pains. But she not only praised and thanked Jesus for her sufferings, 
She desired to suffer more, comforted by the example of her divine Savior. It was not she who suffered, but her Lord Jesus Christ who suffered in her. By Holy Communion, the saint received a grace by which she has merited to be numbered among the most patient of saints. This is not only the case. Animated by this heavenly food, St. Lawrence braved the flames, St. Vincent the rap, St. Sebastian the shower of arrows, St. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, the Puri of Lyons, and many other martyrs, every kind of torture which the devil could invent. These saints could only be content if they could but return their Savior's love for love, life for life, death for death. They embraced the very instruments of their tortures. They even exalted and glorified in them. Now, this was the effect of the Holy Eucharist. This life-giving bread imparted to them courage and joy in every pain and trial. For this very reason, in the early times of the persecutions, all Christians, in order to be prepared for martyrdom, received the Blessed Sacrament every day. In Ferrara, there lived a man named Levi Pisciola, who was often afflicted with temptations of the flesh since his teenage years, and often consented to them, committing many mortal sins. To free himself from this miserable state, he determined to marry a beautiful girl, Maria Orlo. He thought this would solve his problem. Momentarily, the wife, being so understanding and virtuous, was able to help her husband conquer his passion. The marriage, however, did not last. Being sickly and childless, Maria died very soon, in less than two years. He was again in danger. He was not ready to marry again. He thought that to remain a widower was to expose himself again to his former temptations. He then consulted a good and holy friend, Pietro Bello, and received the advice to go frequently to confession and holy communion. He followed this advice and experienced in himself such extraordinary efforts of the sacrament that he could not help exclaiming, Oh, I wish I had seen my friend sooner. I am certain that I would not have committed so many terrible sins of impurity if I had received Holy Communion more frequently. The sacraments which makes virgins. Impelled by love of God and Mother Mary, Levi entered the solitary life in the monastery, where he died a very holy life. Daily reception of Holy Communion brings us everlasting life. Saint Catherine of Siena, from Mass Wednesday to Ascension Day, took no other food than Holy Communion. Saint Nicholas de la Flu, for 15 successive years, lived without other nourishment than the sacred body of our Lord. Saint Liberalis, Bishop of Athens, fasted every day in the week, taking nothing at all. And on Sunday, his only nourishment consisted of this heavenly food, yet he was always strong and vigorous. Make it your goal from here on to go to Mass frequently, daily if possible, and receive Jesus in Holy Communion to receive the health, the strength, and the power to resist all evil temptations, especially against purity, that no doctor or medicine can give you. O oh, loving Lord Jesus, truly present in the Eucharist, after having received you in Holy Communion, I praise, glorify, thank, and adore you, now dwelling in my heart. You died for me to ransom me from my sins, sickness, infestation, and challenges. In this moment of my trials and difficulties, I humbly ask Mother Mary to assist me to bargain for many trials and difficulties that I would now present to you. Please, God the Father, accept the sick, the afflicted, the possessed, who are now terribly suffering, 
while I offer the passion and death of Jesus, of these suffering people. God the Father, I know you cannot refuse your son Jesus, who shed his last drop of blood for all of them. I know as you accept Jesus as our Holocaust, you'll also accept our petition for the healing, conversion, and deliverance of these people. This we ask to the most powerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of chaste heart of Saint Joseph, in the name of the Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.